because it was such like it was such an and I struggled let me back up so we're building an addition and let me back up even more so no let me go forward so I had to build <laughs> hmm today is going to be to take that wall apart. I've got to glue all the seams in between the blocks with uh, foam adhesive, just the feet in the right spot. I'm going to be putting the rebar in. I'm actually also drilling into the ledge and I'll be epoxying the rebar into the ledge and also into the foundation. Kind of work my way around, set the first course permanently and then build up from there. And the building up from there is gonna be just super easy. It's like putting together Legos. Styrofoam fits easily together. You just bang it with your hand and then it's together and then move on from there, so. So I started the ICFs over here with that corner block. I had a bunch of feet on it, leveled it up, and then worked over here to this block where I immediately ran into ledge. This ledge is kind of prevalent in this site, so I knew I would have to work around it. That's one of the reasons I got the feet, so that I could avoid building footings. I could just use the feet to level the blocks and then the concrete will ooze out kind of underneath the block and create somewhat of a footing. After placing this first block, you go to the next block, you work up a block, you do this one, you kind of keep going your course horizontally. Um, and then I brought my horizontal course back to the wall and then worked to level everything, plumb everything and make sure it's square with the current um, house. And then basically worked my way around to the other side of the house. <clears throat> and again, that's the gap that's underneath. There is rebar under there, but you can't quite see it. Oh, there it is a little bit. Um, so that basically will squeeze out and be my footing. Um, what I'm doing here is what's called a monopore. Um, concrete goes in the top of the forms, goes down and creates that footing, oozes out underneath. And then we do only about a six inch lift and then stop pouring. Well, basically we, we continue around the entire foundation, pour that six inch lift all the way around, and then basically let the concrete slake for an hour or so in the summer more if you're doing it in the winter. Um, and then we'll do, we'll come back and do 12 inch lifts on top of it. So the reason is if you let it slake, it'll be, it'll harden enough so that you can actually pour on top of it and it won't all pour out the bottom. So doing a mono pour like this has a number of advantages, um, especially when you have a challenging site like I have, um, means that I don't have to get the pump truck out here twice. Um, it means that I can pour it in one shot, so if there's labor costs involved, those are reduced. Uh, it eliminates the cold joint between the footing and the wall that normally happens. Um, and so, and for me, it, it eliminated the need to have to pour footings, which for some reason I found unbelievably challenging to even figure out how to do on all this ledge. So this is a good shot of the rebar that I've run through the form and you can see I've actually drilled holes in the existing foundation and epoxy the rebar in and I've done that not only up here at the top in this block but if you can see down below um, I've done that down there as well so that's the footing steel going around epoxied in um, and it goes around the foundation um, I've also got vertical steel in some places this one here is epoxied into that hole down below. Uh, I don't think you can actually see it real well, but um, that's gonna create a super solid joint straight up through the footing and the wall um, and really make this foundation rock solid.
So I've got two pieces of steel up top. These, this is where it overlaps from um, the fount coming out of the foundation. Um, when using ICFs like this, you don't have to tie these. They're in a pocket which holds them together. Um, so I've got steel on the top row here, um, and then I skipped a row, and then I have steel down below as well. And then around the corner, two pieces of steel on the corner. Um, these I'll tie up and make secure at some point. And then coming around the side here, it's kind of what it looks like. And then some more overlapping steel, another vertical piece. Um, that's pretty much what it looks like. These feet are pretty incredible actually. So they have an adjustable, drill adjustable top so I can put an Allen wrench in there and adjust these up and down. It lets me really fine tune the, lev the plumb uh, of the blocks and then also the level of the blocks um, when I first set them. Um, and then you can see my ICF step down into that hole, the pit of despair. Um, this this kind of cut out here, I will I will scab a piece of plywood on like so uh, to keep the concrete from just pouring out of there. There's really no use for that. Um, but it seemed easier to just use plywood to create that to fill that gap rather than trying to. I, you can see over here I scribed the ICF um, to meet the ledge as best I could and and but as you're still left with some triangles just because the webs on the ICF don't really start um, until here and so this block would just literally be a piece of styrofoam with no webbing to actually hold it together so in in situations like this I'll just scab plywood on as well um, you can see I've got some plywood here in six spots actually and this is because my corner joint I was unable to stagger um, because the the corner was so tight um, get you a good example of this so right here is a staggered a staggered joint right so this here this joint does not fall on top of a joint below or a joint above um, the next joint well, it's really hard to see, isn't it? I think the next joint is right there. So, because this corner was so tight, I was unable to to stagger them. And so, all you need to do is uh, scab a piece of plywood on there to connect into the webbing. And that'll basically protect that joint for the pour. So, you can see down below, I've used some zip ties temporarily to hold the block together while the foam basically cured it's we use foam glue in the in the seams in a lot of places on the bottom course and that's because we're not building this ICF wall on top of a footing normally when you build it on a footing your foam is in between the block uh, it's basically all along these edges here uh, and it glues it down to the footing but of course we're not using footings here so the glue basically keeps the blocks tight together along the bottom course so the feet can lift it up as one unit um, and also I just find that it gives me a little extra insurance for blowouts. So there are sections where the ICFs don't uh, don't use full blocks this is actually one of them here and this is actually one that we had to redo after we put it in um, so the block goes from here to here it's a short block um, but as you look down this course, they're all full blocks from the, the original foundation. So you have to cut the blocks. They're super easy to cut. We use a pruning saw. You can see they're all numbered. So these are the actual, uh, the inches. One, two, three. This, this block happens to be upside down. Um, you can see them here, actually. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. So these are inch marks all along every block. These are the web so that's where the plastic webbing is if I go up to the top of the wall you'll see that that is the webbing and then these BB's here which is actually the brand of the ICF there's a super strong connection in here for drilling and hanging heavy things off of on the wall but if you look at this block here 
we originally put it in and it was a little tight, so I decided it would be a good idea to jam it in. Um, and so I did, and I got it to fit, and that was fine until I went to put the block on top of it. And what ended up happening was, because I jammed it in, it spread this, and it changed where the teeth actually fell. And I found that I could not get the top block on at all because these... I basically had like a half a tooth here and this block was just like, uh-uh, that's not gonna happen. So I just actually ran the saw down this line, cleaned out the styrofoam, and then I did that a couple more times until the, the block came in and I was able to put the block on top. Um, super easy fix. Um, I would recommend if you're gonna use glue and if you're gonna use like short pieces, uh, put your block in, glue it, put a block on top, even if it's a temporary chunk, just to span this here, because then it'll keep the teeth lined up, the glue will dry, and then you'll be good to go. This piece of rebar, I think, yeah, so this piece of rebar is epoxied in. I can't really zoom in to show you, but it's epoxied into the ledge down below. Um, it's technically on the wrong side of the wall. It should be on the inside of the wall. Um, it's on the outside, but I'm not really backfilling a whole lot here anyway. You want your vertical rebar on the tension side of the wall, so if you were, if you had dirt on the other side backfilled against this, it would be pulling on the wall this way. And you would want your rebar here to resist that kind of warping force of the, the weight being pushed this way. I was, I was happy to get the hole drilled in the rock. So this one, which is not epoxied in, I can hold and I'll, I'll zip tie this to the tension side of the wall as well. This question is what am I going to do with the crawl space that's left on the inside of this addition, right? So I've got tons of dirt, rocks, ledge sticking up now grass um it's kind of a mess and it's too much to fill with stone and sand like i did in the garage and so the plan that i've come up with so far is to cover it in a 10 mil plastic sheeting um, and then just concrete over it just a thin layer just to just to cap it and keep the moisture in in the ground and not in my crawl space I thought about washing all the ledge so that it was just rock down here, but that seems unrealistic at this point. Um, so, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the addition project and kind of where I'm at with these ICFs. Um, it was super super hard to get started with this project. Uh, I was kind of confused how I would go over this ledge and still be confident in the ability of the wall to be what it needed to be. Um, but finally I just settled on this this uh, fast foot method, you know, screwing these to the bottom and adjusting it. And it really, I really think it's the way to go um, for this application and for what I'm doing. It may not be what you, what you need, um, but um, I think it's actually gonna work out pretty well for me. So yeah, thanks for watching.